all the engines on the island of Sodor look forward to harvest festival time. But most of all, they look forward to Sir Topham Hatt's harvest firework display. Sir Topham Hatt came to see Thomas and James. James, you are to collect the fireworks from the depot. James was overjoyed. Thomas wasn't happy at all. But I wanted to collect the fireworks, Thomas pouted. Sir Topham Hatt chose me because I'm as red as a rocket and twice as grand. James steamed proudly across the countryside. Brightest and best, brightest and best, he hummed happily to himself. He was having a wonderful day. Thomas was still upset when he arrived at the shunting yards. Bother James, he grouched, and he biffed the troublesome trucks crossly around the yard. When James arrived at the depot, he was very excited. The freight cars were all ready for him, filled safely to the top with fireworks. James was coupled up with the precious cargo, and he steamed away. Thomas shunted the last truck crossly into place. The troublesome trucks were glad that job was finished. Oh. James happily steamed along. He was thinking about the fireworks. He was imagining all the sparkles, flashes, and shooting stars when suddenly there was a loud noise. And James ground to a halt. I will have to go and call for help said his driver. Thomas puffed back into Knapford Station as Gordon was letting off his passengers. Children and grown-ups from all over the island had come to see the fireworks. Seeing the children cheered Thomas up, but Sir Topham Hatt looked concerned. James has broken down, he said. You must collect him, Thomas, and bring him back, or the fireworks display will be canceled. Oh, no, cried Thomas. Then all the children will be sad. And he set off to collect James. Thomas puffed across the countryside. Even with his light on, Thomas knew he had to be very careful. Thomas found James broken down on the track. Hello, busted boiler, teases Thomas. You don't look very useful now. James was upset. But when Thomas got behind James, he couldn't see ahead. You will have to look out for me, said Thomas. James was cross. You said I wasn't useful, he pouted. But if the fireworks don't get to Knapford Station, puffed Thomas, the display will be canceled. James didn't want the children to be sad, so he agreed to look out for Thomas, and they set off together. When the track was straight and clear, James called out, Go faster, Thomas! And Thomas did. They were soon working happily together and making good time. Sir Topham Hatt checked his watch. There was still no sign of Thomas or James. It's very late, he thought. It's almost a children's bedtime. Even Gordon was worried. I'll have to cancel the display, said Sir Topham Hatt. So the disappointed children started to board the coaches. At last, they could see the signal lights. 
the signal had turned red. Thomas and James stopped. Why would the signal be red? puzzled James. Maybe a passenger train is coming through, puffed Thomas. Gordon must be taking the children back, cried James. Thomas and James were very upset. We're here, they cried, and sounded their whistles as loudly as they could. But no one could hear them. The children were all on board. Gordon was ready to depart. Then Thomas had a bright idea. Send up a rocket, he told his driver. So his driver carefully lit a rocket. He stood well back as it whooshed into the sky. The rocket burst into stars. A sparkling dragon, cried Sir Topham Hatt. It must be Thomas and James. Stop, Gordon, he said. The firework display is back on. The junction signal turned to green, and Thomas and James were soon on their way. James and Thomas were soon at the station. The children cheered. Good work, Thomas, cried James happily. And good work, James, agreed Thomas. Good work, both of you, boomed Sir Topham Hatt. That night, Thomas and James watched the fireworks together. I think we are both useful engines, said James proudly. But we are most useful when we work together, puffed Thomas.